This is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena, here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, here on March the 10th, 2022. Yeah, we've... Uh, temperature's not too, too, too bad out there, you know? Uh, we still got another month of winter here. I don't know what it's like where my guest is right now, but... but um, Either way, looking forward to it getting a little um, more drivable, I guess you can say. But folks, I have had filmmaker Anthony Cabano on the show here not too long ago, who was sent my way. Who did? I think it was Scotty McCoy, I think, sent him my way. And uh, we talked about a film called The Flower City Butcher. And I think we got the flower part on the show here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I give you the very lovely Samantha Larkin. How do you do, Samantha? Hi. Good. Thanks. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Love the the uh, the the white sheet behind you with the bl- where where you're wearing oh, yeah. the black. Yeah. You're wearing the black, and I love your hair. It, it Thank actually. You. It looks a lot more artsy than what I got going on back here. <laughs> <laughs> this is just my plain audition sheet that I use for videos. You know what? Nothing wrong with that. I had, uh, I think it was, um, I had a guy the other day come on here, just had green background, and he was like, "How do I make Zoom make different?" But I said, "I don't know." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as long as I get the, yeah, as long as I get the interview in, uh, who cares what my background looks like? Oh, you yeah. know? <laughs> as long as there's no illegal activity going on, and I don't, <laughs> I don't think my cat's up to anything uh, suspicious, so I think I'm Not good. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, Anthony, I uh, had. Uh, forward your info to me and um i think well one of my standard first questions to get to know the guest and allow my audience to get to know the guest is uh to give us some of your background and what made you want to get into acting yeah so i actually grew up doing theater i started doing theater when i was about nine years old uh, just in the children's community theater in my you know hometown and I, when I was 10 years old, I got my first supporting role. And that is just when I fell in love with acting. Um, and from then on out, I just knew I wanted to be an actor. I continued doing theater uh, through high school and even in college. And I love theater, but I've always wanted to do more film and television. So it wasn't until about 2020 when I decided to try to make the transition from stage to film. Um, of course, I wasn't able to do much in 2020 for obvious reasons. Are you so, sure? Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> what was so, wrong with 2020? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know. It, uh, you know, I think <laughs> some people started to get sick, you know, but. Uh, so it wasn't until last year when I actually started to, you know, book things and get more into film, and uh, here I am now. You know, it's funny because I was in, I interviewed um, Sean Thompson back and back on Monday, and he okay. said when he said when the pandemic hit, that was kind of when the when his uh, acting career started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy how that works. Yeah, I guess you know, but. Um, but um, yeah, Anthony has got you cast in Flower City Butcher. I, I got, I'm looking you up here because uh, you were in a, a Nightmare on Elm Street uh, fan film, yes. uh, The Last Nightmare. And you, we got a lot of fan films out there oh, right yeah. now. And, uh, you know, um, talk about this experience because that one is completed. I haven't seen it. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but. Uh, I've been yeah. told told about it, so I'm looking mm-hmm. at a picture of you right now. The last night, it's a great picture. No, oh, yeah. So that was a fun film, and it's it's funny. I actually was not originally cast to play the lead. Um, the other actor was supposed to play the lead, but he ended up getting 
he had some kind of emergency conflict while we were filming and he couldn't come back the next day. So we kind of had to switch the roles and I took on the lead role and I got to do a few different kind of stunts, I guess. I got to roll on in the ground and, you know, fall onto the couch and I got scraped up by Freddy Krueger with the blood all on my face and my neck. And so that was just, it was a lot of fun. And I enjoyed that film. Can you believe Freddy Krueger would do that? <laughs> yeah, I know. I have to get him back, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, according to IMDb, and correct me if I'm wrong, your mm -hmm. your first on screen was uh, TV uh, one summer. You got to work with a well- so it says that you were a restaurant patron, but I mean, Sarah Drew, of course, is in this film. Yeah, so that was actually a background character that I played. I've done a few background, you know, parts down in Wilmington, North Carolina. I'm in North Carolina, and we have a big film community, actually, in Wilmington. We have the Screen Gem Studio, and they do a lot of big SAG productions down there. So... I've had the opportunity to work on some of the big SAG sets in the background, and that's been a lot of fun. Um, I just recently did one uh, for a TV show that has Jessica Chastain in it. So oh, I got to yeah. Watch her. Uh, yeah, and she just got nominated for an Oscar. So that was really cool to get to see her, you know, up close and personal. Um, I got to see her perform a song for that scene. Uh, and, you know, of course, I didn't have any lines, but I know I will show up in the background. So I can't wait to see those things. And, you know, like, oh, look, there I am on screen with, you know, Jessica Chastain. So, yeah, I like Jessica Chastain. You know, she's, uh, oh, yeah. yep, she packs quite a punch, you know, uh, in these movies. Um, yeah, she was, she's up for an Oscar uh, this year for. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Tammy Faye. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the ta eyes of ta ta Tammy Faye. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that in the theater, you know. I thought she was brilliant in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But um, I'll go through your credits here because Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. Mm -hmm. Now you that get that. You, you, you get uh, Rachel McAdams and Kathy mm -hmm. Bates in this. I mean, you're yeah. in for some good company here. Oh yeah, that was a, just another background role, but I still, I got to see Rachel McAdams and that was really awesome. She was one of my favorite actors when I was a kid growing up and, you know, I was so close to her at some points I could touch her if I was allowed to. Um, so that was really fun. And again, you know, I'll be walking in the background uh, during a shopping mall scene. I'm not sure when that comes out, but I know it's going to be, I think, a movie theater movie. So even if I don't, you know, I'll just be in the background, it's going to be cool to be able to point myself out, you know, on the big screen. It will be fun. Yeah. Um, I first became aware of her playing Regina Georgia Mean Girls, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what I find brilliant about her in Mean Girls is that the Regina George character has been done to death in other movies. And yet oh, she yeah. she somehow made the role look three dimensional and broad and fresh. Yeah, she made it her own. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So um, she was great in it. And Sherlock Holmes and uh, Spotlight, oh, yeah. like, mm -hmm. um she's come a long way and um i think there's gonna be an oscar in her future at some point you know oh for sure for sure yeah <laughs> yeah didn't see kathy bates when you were there i did not she was not in that scene um but i did also see um the little girl who plays ant-man's daughter and ant-man um her name is abby i can't remember her last name right now but she was playing the main character and i got to see her too so that okay. was fun. I love the Marvel movies, and she's been in those. So. Okay, and uh, like I know, I'm just I'm going through these because um, I don't have uh, television. I just got my Blu-rays. I just that's how <laughs> I get set up here. So you're really uh, introducing and uh, and also promoting your films here, yeah. not just to me but to the audience. But um, but um, we have Tales of Legend. 
Mm -hmm. yeah that was actually the very first thing I've ever worked on um again that was you know another background you know I've started out doing background work just so I could get experience on set so I can you know build up to the speaking roles that I have now yeah well you know what um I think you've got nice presence you know um and some of these um Anthony Camano had told me about too, mm -hmm. like um, this little piggy, for example. I love that title for this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we just filmed the concept pretty video for that last weekend. Uh, I play a character named Rose Johnson, mm -hmm. and we got to film the kill scenes actually. So there was a lot of fake blood going on everywhere. I got you know, shot with arrows and, you know, got to crawl on the ground, running away from, you know, the killers. So that was definitely a lot of fun. And the Indiegogo for that is coming out this summer. So everyone can be on the lookout for that this summer. We're going to try to, you know, raise the funds to produce the feature length film for that. What are you getting shot with arrows for? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I didn't do anything, but, you know, you piss off Robin Hood? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see when the movie comes out. <laughs> Listen, I want you to be the final girl. Yes, yeah, I do uh, too. <laughs> how, how, how are you going to do that when you're plastic? Well, I suppose when you look at Jane, Jane Levy and um, the Evil Dead remake, I, I suppose you can... <laughs> She was worse for wear <laughs> for that, so maybe, maybe you might be fine. <laughs> the arrow here. I can yeah. hang stuff on these. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hope maybe Flower City Butcher, final girl. We'll see. I love the, the, the title of it, This Little Piggy. When, oh, you, yeah. when, when, when you were young, did your parents play This Little Piggy with you? the you know like on the like fingers and toes no the... uh, well i never had it done on the my fingers i remember when i was little my uh dad would do that with my toes and it's like um yeah 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 that's what i think of and i know i'm not the only one that's had that the most people in my generation have mm -hmm. yeah so you did you have that oh yeah definitely i know that well yeah <laughs> now yeah. you know a little yeah. sister that I did that with her when she was little too. So mm -hmm. I never heard it done with the fingers though. Yeah, actually, I don't know if I ever, I think it has always been on the toes. I don't know why I said fingers, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but that that's an interesting uh, title for a horror film. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, the main killer for that is going to be wearing a, a pig mask, you know, as their disguise. So that's kind of where the title comes from. You know, that's very common. I find in a lot of horror films. I think, think the first time I recall seeing that was Motel Hell, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where the where the killer had a pig a pig mask on. And um, but I mean, I mean, certainly the Saw franchise did that. You know, um, I don't know what it is with horror films fascination with pigs, mind you, but um, I don't know. like I could think of more frightening animals I could think of that uh, you probably want to make a mask with. Like, yeah. I, like I heard in Africa, for example, that hippopotamus kills uh, several oh, thousand people a year. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe someone should make a movie with, you know, a hippopotamus as their, you know, mask. Yeah. Like, I'm just, good. yeah, like when I think of uh, pigs, I think of like Charlotte's Web, Babe. Um, like, I'm not, I'm not thinking something vicious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe that's why people go with that, you know, kind of take a animal that people perceive as, as cute and, you know, make it scary. Well, speaking of scary, let's talk about Anthony Camano. I mean, I mean, yeah, let's talk about Anthony. I was actually talking to Anthony uh, last night on the phone. Mm -hmm. He seems to be, I don't know what he does during the day, but he's usually up like all night, you know, and um, he's got no filter. And I like that about him. Um, 
you know, I know you're going to be on Scotty McCoy's podcast coming up, you know, so yeah. um, Scotty is the one that introduced me to Anthony. Okay. And uh, I'll just tell you right now, you're going to love Scotty. Yeah. Yep. Scotty's great. And um, so I'm getting well versed in uh, the Flower City Butcher. Um, have you met Anthony yet? I have not. We've actually only uh, talked via, you know, messaging. Um, I've not met him in person because, uh, you know, I do live in North Carolina and, you know, he's up there in New York. Um, and actually, we kind of met through, we have a mutual friend, um, Austin Bittekofer, and he's actually the one who introduced me to Anthony. And that's kind of how I got involved with the Flower City Butcher. Actually, Austin just at sent me a friend's request on Facebook okay. uh, um, today, I think, and I, I accepted it because it, he had a lot of friends in common with me. But but um, now that I notice it, now I know why he sees me. He sees me through uh, my association with Anthony. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I guess I'll be having him on the show at some point, but uh, I see Troy Elke on here as narrator and I'm very familiar with Troy. Okay. Yeah. But, um, and of course, Anthony, what have your association so far been like with Anthony? Do, do you know about his no filter? Uh... Um, I don't. I mean, we've just had pretty normal conversations, just mostly about the Flower City Butcher is really what we've talked about. I'm sure we'll all get to know each other more once we actually meet in person and start filming. So I'm definitely excited to actually meet all of these people, you know, in person. The only people I know actually so far that's involved in the film is Austin. And, um, you know, I also know Bernard Sharp, who's playing another one of the musicians in the movie as well. But those are the only two people that I actually have met. So. Well, Anthony speaks his mind, and I don't mean that in a bad way either, you know, like um, I, he's done a lot of these like four or five hour live feeds, you know, and I popped oh, yeah. into, <laughs> I popped into one recently, you know, with Scotty and, uh, and um, yeah, Anthony's, uh, Anthony's a great guy. You're going to like working with him. So. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he spoke highly of you. <laughs> so you're on here because um he said you'd be a good fit for my show so there you go all right but well, um thank you, Anthony. <laughs> there you go yes but um like i said you get troy elke <laughs> are you familiar with troy um i am not actually oh you got him on facebook um i actually don't know if i do yet but i'm definitely gonna have to look him up now and make sure i send that request well, because I'm going to tell you, um, he might be the most talented individual involved in this film. Oh, wow. Just, okay. And I say that based on the very hilarious short videos that he does <laughs> on the spot. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know where he comes up with this stuff, but he's one of the funniest people I know of. <laughs> Okay, yep. nice. I love a good sense of humor. So. Yep. Well, he's here as narrator because he's, he, uh, Anthony said he loves his voice. Anthony hadn't even seen his videos. And I'm like, Anthony, oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I can spend hours watching Troy Elke videos. And he seems to do a lot of these while he's at work. <laughs> mm. Look at that. Yeah. But, uh, yep. But Sean Alexander Thompson I had on Monday. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I've had Angel Bradford on uh, back in January. Okay. Um, she's got an FX background. Angel's pretty funny, you know. Mm -hmm. Scotty McCoy is listed on here. As I said, um, I can't recommend him any higher. And uh, so I've interviewed one, two, three, four, five, and with Anthony, six of you now. And oh, I haven't, wow. and, this, and this film's not even out yet, and I've interviewed yeah. six of you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Yep. And Daniel Lund, I've had pitched at me. I haven't reached out yet. Yep. Wow. Okay. 
do you, can you tell us anything about your character in this film? Yeah, you, I can. You play Sarah. <laughs> yes, so mm -hmm. I play Sarah and she's kind of been struggling. She's been going through a hard time because before the events of the movie, her boyfriend had passed away. So she's, you know, really been struggling with that. She doesn't know if she can really move forward or if she can ever really love again. Um, but her best friends, Lisa and Jonathan, are going to take a trip up to New York City. And they invite Sarah to come along. But mm -hmm. she's not really feeling it. But she decides to tag along anyway. And they stop on the way there uh, in upstate New York at an Airbnb. And while they're there, that's when they find out that just the year before, a group of people were staying at that same house who mysteriously disappeared. So that's kind of, you know, where the story goes from there. And my character is kind of the more quiet type and unassuming, but she's actually stronger than, you know, what she looks to be. And throughout the process of the story, she kind of learns to grow and finally move forward. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard of concepts like this, like uh, the, the Descent, for example, the heroine in that went through a situation where she lost uh, loved ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, her friends, they went down uh mountain climbing and they end up in these caverns or whatnot and of course then the supernatural comes into play mm -hmm. okay. and she has to uh step up and she yeah. ends up becoming stronger because of it yeah i remember um uh conan the barbarian the schwarzenegger one not the crappy remake but the mm -hmm. The Arnold Schwarzenegger one, they had that tag at the beginning, what does not kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. yeah. Does that describe Sarah? I think so, yeah. I think so. She definitely learns to step up, like you said, and finally, you know, show her strength. So and I love that. And, you know, Anthony said that he thinks he wants to try and make the message to help people who feel stuck in life in some kind of way. And I think that's great because, you know, I feel like everybody in the past two or three years has felt stuck in some kind of way. So I think that's a really great message to have. Absolutely, absolutely. Speaking of stuck uh, recently, how have you been handling the whole pandemic? Um, good, good so far. Um, <laughs> I guess, I mean, as good as you can, I suppose. Um, you know, I did actually have it uh, back in December, unfortunately. Um, Glad but, you're over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, you know, sick for about a week or so. Um, you know, I, I've heard some people just like, oh, it's just a bad cold, but I was like very flu-like for several days, but no past. I'm good now. You know, hopefully I'll try to get my booster sometime soon, you know, try to prevent that again. So, yeah, but so far, other than that, you know, pretty good, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm an essential worker, so I've worked through the yeah, entire thing. Oh, you're, you're an essential worker as well? Yeah, yeah. my uh, regular job, I'm actually a legal assistant. So, and you know, law firms were deemed essential. So I had to go into work every day, so. So, so if I have to, if I have to uh, uh, take Anthony to task, I just call you, right? <laughs> I actually don't do that kind. I just do a like social security disability. So. Yeah. <laughs> we love Anthony, you know. Yeah. Um, I work as a cleaner. Okay. Yep. So I, I've been working all through. That's been the... needed a lot in lately too. Well, I just got a new job at the, the local hospital where I'm going to be making more money with it. Thank goodness, oh. because <laughs> I, I understand, yes, doctors and nurses are very important, but I don't understand why cleaners are never mentioned in that sentence. Yeah, that's true. I and guess clean, that's, you know, something that people overlook and don't realize how important it is. Cleaners are not paid the way they should. The hospital, though, I'll be making... Uh, five or six dollars more than I'm doing now so that is awesome yeah yep but um 
other than Flower City Butcher, um, you've got one other credit here in pre-production, Live, Laugh, Die. Is, what can you tell us about that without... Uh... So I actually just uh, got cast in that. So I don't know too much about what I'm going to be doing right now. Um, I just know I'm going to have like a smaller cameo type of role. Um, like again, it was just, you know, two days ago I got cast in it. So I don't have too many details on that just yet well i've already interviewed somebody that's in it okay yep um the lovely the very beautiful lynn lowry okay yep um she was in uh david cronenberg's film um um why is it uh, escaping me? <laughs> I should know this right on the tip of my tongue. Um, and of course, it's not going to come up here. I'll find it. Oh, shivers. Why was I? Because I got that sign by her. Um, she was a nurse in shivers. She was in um, uh, Cat People. And she was in uh, George Romero's The Crazies. Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, she, she's got a past. Um, I met her at Horrorama 2018. And um, I became the first one to do uh, a podcast interview with her. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I, I, really, I really appreciated that. And... Uh, she was awesome to meet she's a hugger which mm -hmm. i which i liked and uh she's awesome so um i was glad to have her on the show she's wonderful to meet so if you get to work with her she's a treat okay um i haven't had donna lee heising on yet um i'm certainly familiar with the name um but uh haven't uh had her on here yet so but She's in a lot of these films, and it's always nice to. Uh, I guess she was a showgirl in Blade Runner. Looking back, <laughs> okay. Wow, that's a big film. Yeah. Yep. But anyway, I um, you got two uh, notable names involved with that, so this sounds like it's going to be an interesting movie. Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah. I've seen about it so far. So as an actor, like I'm not an actor at all. I do cameo in nine James Balsamo movies, but um, trust me, watch my performance. You can tell I'm not an actor, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but you are. So how is it you approach uh, your typical role? Like what do you get into research or what, what is it you do to, what do, is it that you do to bring uh, your full potential? Yeah, it just depends on the character. Um, it depends on how much research I'll need. Uh, like another project that I'm going to be working on that's not on my credits yet because we're trying to, you know, keep it quiet at the beginning, I'm going to be playing a banshee in that. So I did, you know, research on Irish banshees and, you know, what do they sound like to try and make sure I get that right. Um, but most of the time with, you know, more typical roles, I just get this, when I get the script, I just read over it like a few times. And I really try to get in the mindset of the character and the situation, you know, what they're feeling. Um, I'm, a very naturally empathetic person, which I guess makes it easier to really get in tune with my character's emotions and, you know, go from there. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what's the, what, what was your biggest challenge in any of these films you've done? Uh, biggest challenge in any of my films. Um, I, I haven't really, honestly, I'm glad to say I haven't really faced anything too challenging. Um, 
yeah, I actually haven't faced anything too challenging yet, which I guess the challenges are yet to come. It's just, you know, if I have to travel, you know, like to Wilmington or Charlotte, it's just the drive there and back is the most challenging thing, honestly. Um, but yeah, I can't think of anything too challenging that stands out, which I guess is a good thing. Yeah. Have you been in the makeup chair uh, before, like uh, for like makeup or special effects? Yes. Yeah. Um, like for the uh, last nightmare, I had to get special effects makeup that shows the scratches from, you know, Freddy Krueger all on my face and my neck. Um, so that was really fun. And for some of the background roles that I've done down in Wilmington, North Carolina, I've had to get a lot of different hairdos done, uh, like the Jessica Chastain movie or TV show is set in the 60s. So they did a whole beehive with my hair. I got the whole beehive done. Uh, that was definitely not very fun to brush out. Um, <laughs> last weekend too, um, I had some fake blood in my hair that I had to brush out as well. Um, so my hair has been through a lot. I can definitely say that. <laughs> You got beautiful hair. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, talk about because I haven't seen the last nightmare. In fact, um, I really did, did. It really didn't cross my radar until I was looking up uh, you before the interview. You know, or like when I was researching you prior to doing this. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen it. So talk about um, being in the makeup chair. How long it took? What they did. Mm -hmm. um so this was actually you know a short film mm -hmm. so the makeup was really only for like one or two scenes so i didn't have to wear it for that long um which was good but it uh jamie apple did the makeup for that and she's great uh, i think she had a interview recently with scotty as well um, she just added me on facebook so uh okay. somebody yeah i i guess i'm gonna have have to reach out to her. I get uh, a lot of people reach out to me and they've got a lot of friends in common with me and I got to stop and look at them because they are obviously recognizing what I do as an interviewer and uh, if they've got skills in these movies, yeah, they're more than welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but one thing that actually was challenging, uh, challenging for that film was we filmed this in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And summer in North Carolina is very, very hot. <laughs> um, so one day uh, we were filming, I had the blood and for the entire day, I was just covered in fake blood and very real sweat. <laughs> you know, I had, to, um, it was in the scene where I had died. So I had to lay down mm -hmm. um, like under this tarp and you know, the sun was beating down and you know, that was kind of tough, but still fun do you, you think you had it as bad as uh sissy spacek and carrie oh no not like that <laughs> not not on that level because she was in um the the when the pig's blood dumps on her you know she was in that for a long time <laughs> yeah, nowhere near that level no <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that can't be too comfortable yeah, yeah. so um do you have any charities that you're involved with that you want to promote on here that you're passionate about? Uh, I wish I could say I did. Gosh, I hope I don't sound bad. No, uh, no, no, no. I, I always open that opportunity in case okay. people advocate yeah, things, I mean, you know. If I ever end up making a lot more money than I currently have now, then I will definitely start donating to charity. Uh, but, you know, I'm just not in a position where I can currently do that, unfortunately. Um, yeah, no, no, not a pressure question. <laughs> it's just something um, I, I ask all the guests in case there's something out there that... Uh, oh, yeah, they, that's a great yeah. question to ask, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, what about, uh, you got to web page social media where can people find you okay yeah mm -hmm. um i do have an instagram um and what i did have it public i made it public for about two weeks and it only took two weeks for some person to take all my pictures and use my name to create a fake account with oh um, wow luckily, yeah luckily we got that shut down pretty quickly so it's back on private now um but i will if you request to follow me i'll accept it um it's samantha larkin seven 
is my Instagram. Um, I do have Facebook as well, Samantha Larkin. Yeah, I just got you. Yep. <laughs> I don't post too much of my own on Facebook, uh, but I have been thinking of creating an actual actor page where I'll post more about you know all of my you know acting and everything. So I might do that soon. Um, and I'm currently working on creating a, an online pro, uh, portfolio. So I'll have that done soon too. I'll, I'll send you a, a thing on for Instagram as well. I don't do a lot on Instagram. You're not going to find anything on my page. It's just I find it's another alternative where I can reach out to people, you know, and for uh, interviews, you know. But, um, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned why you're pri a private on there because mm -hmm. a lot yeah. of times I don't uh, reach out if it's in private because I'm thinking, ah, they want to be left alone. So I'm... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I had it on private for a while because I was always afraid of things like that happening, but I've been trying to post more recently. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, I'm going to put it on public, you know, to, you know, reach more people and, you know, make more connections. But, you know, like I said, two weeks later, someone was using my pictures of my name, pretending to be me. And so I had to make it back on private again. Why were they doing? Did you know the person? No, it was some random person uh, using my face and my name to sell inappropriate images, <laughs> pretending to be me. So, wow. yeah, so I don't want that happening again. No, no. you don't. No, no. you don't. <laughs> no. Did you find out who the person was? Did they get uh, shut down or? I have no idea. We got the, um, we got the account shut down and of course they blocked me. So I just had some friends who they requested to follow them and they sent this to me and like, hey, this isn't you, is it? And I'm like, no, it's not. So they, you know, got it removed. I think it's just some random troll because it's just something that people do a lot of the times, you know, one of those scams that goes around, unfortunately. So yeah, I don't know how it happened either. I don't know how they found me, but. Yeah. yeah, it's like, why would they pinpoint you, you know, it's yeah. like, um, I mean, you're lovely, but still, it's like, yeah. it's, it's like the kind of thing you see happen to uh, celebrities, you know, Yeah, I have no idea. I don't even have that many followers either. So it's like, why would they choose me? But yeah. well, you know, what? Uh, I'm, I think it's sick that that happens, you know, yeah. but um uh, but since I know why you're private, I mean, I can, I'll send your request on there, but, but you want to find much on mine. Okay. Um, it's like, um, I can't post my interviews on there. So it's like, it kind of defeats the purpose, but a lot of people post pictures and stuff, you know, and uh, yeah. 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 So, um, but anyway, no, I'm sorry that happened, but yeah. Uh, you seem to have um, a lot going on acting wise. So um, is there any type of role that you want to play? Like what's your dream role? Oh, there's a few dream roles I have. Well, I do have a dream role for when it comes to theater. Um, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to play Juliet and Romeo and Juliet. It's just one of my theater bucket lists. But as far as film, um, I love like psychological thrillers. I feel like that'd be a really fun genre mm -hmm. to do. You know, the kind of movie where you're not really sure what's real or what's not. Um, I like those. Um, I like period pieces a lot. I feel like it would be really fun to do a period piece. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just, there's a lot of different things that I wanna do. Um, hopefully I'll get to do them, but you know, I'll, I'll just take what I can get right now. So yeah. Well, you never know where it will where it will lead to, you know. Like, um, like I I plan to put you on my uh, roster list for next year, because okay. um, then because then you'll have a yeah. A lot of times, like I'll go down through and I'll have guests come back, and um, it's, especially since you'll probably have a lot more projects done by then, yeah. and ho and hopefully not just background, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, although to be to be fair, you're in background with some pretty good company in those films. So uh, oh, yeah. that's a plus, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, we will see what you can do in front of the camera. And um, uh, Anthony um, highly recommended you for Flower City uh, Butcher. So like 
I just realized until I had you on here, you're you're among six people I've interviewed from that film. <laughs> it's not yeah. even it's not even made yet, but um, yeah, I know. Yeah, but um, but anyway, yeah. Um, I think my last question is, um, and I've asked this of actors before too, because there's obviously a big difference between performing in theater. Oh, and yeah. acting in front of the camera because mm -hmm. in theater you don't have you can't there's nobody to yell cut mm -hmm. um which one do you prefer do, like do you find the theater more challenging because of over that or are you just a natural fit because you've been doing it since you were you say nine yeah yeah um, yeah they honestly they both have their challenges i mean coming from theater that's just kind of what i'm used to and i do love performing in front of people live there's just something you know special about being in the character for a whole two hours straight you know and and being able to hear the audience's reaction in real time is definitely really rewarding you know after delivering a line hearing the laugh or hearing people sniffle and cry during a monologue is you know really rewarding but film is also special in its own way and when you transition you kind of have to learn how to you know tune it down and not be as dramatic as you would on stage so it's kind of a learning process to you know, make that transition. I mean, you know, there's a lot more that can be done through film, like the special effects and, you know, different things like that. Um, so that's really fun as well. And, you know, having to do a scene 10 times over is, you know, very different than theater, but that way, you know, you're gonna get a good take, you're gonna get it right. Whereas in theater, you can mess up and then, you just have to keep going, you know, and hope that nobody notices. But, you know, I definitely love both, but I'm really excited to see where my transition into film will take me. You ever worried about getting a uh, director in the vein of uh, Stanley Kubrick that does like 80 takes? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, well, you know what? It was wonderful having you come on here tonight. You know, um, you've been a wonderful guest and uh, Anthony recommended you highly. So I think you're in good company there and uh, you're going to have fun with Scotty McCoy. Yeah. <laughs> I, you're going to have a lot of fun with him. And uh, he's already spoke. He actually asked me uh, on the phone today. He said, uh, let me know how it goes. I got her on mm -hmm. at the end of the month. And mm -hmm. so I'll have a good report for him. So yeah. Um, yeah, um, I, I was very happy to have you come on here tonight and uh, promote these films. Um, before I uh, let you go, I'd love a plug for my show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, state your name and uh, say you're you're in the upcoming film Flower City Butcher, mm -hmm. and say you're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. My name is Samantha Larkin. I'm going to play. I'm going to be playing Sarah and the Flower City Butcher, and I am listening to Greg Gilbert on the Python's Paradise. And the Indiegogo for the Flower City Butcher will launch on April first, so make sure you check that out. April first, but that's April Fools. Yeah, I know, but this is not a joke. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm sure. You sure. Yeah. Might have to rib Anthony about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to be checking that out. Uh, good luck with this. Um, Thank I think, you. Yes, absolutely. You get a lot of spunk and spirit. And mm -hmm. um, uh, I wish you luck in the future and no more of these idiots uh, posing as you, you know. So um, you're not the only one that's, that's had that, you know. So, uh, you're you're um you're not alone there, but some people obviously have nothing better to do with their time. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, God bless you, and and um, thank you so much for allowing yeah. me the honor. This has been great. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun, and you know I can't wait to see what you do in the future as well. Well, when this is ready, I'll send you the link to it. It'll be unlisted on YouTube until I put it public, 
but okay. unlisted or not, you'll be allowed to put it up. Okay, great. Yep. There's a reason I do that. Um, when we went into lockdown, the station was uh, closed. I couldn't uh, do my show. I couldn't do my interviews. And it was uh, Nancy McLaughlin from Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives, who recommended I do Zoom. She said, if she can do Zoom, I can do Zoom. Yeah. And Zoom, this has become so convenient right in oh, my yeah. own apartment. Mm -hmm. And But my uh, former station manager, before she retired, uh, told me, don't put interviews up right away. Save some for a rainy day. Hmm. Well, the rainy day turned out to be COVID. Because when yeah. Co yeah, when the station went into lockdown, I had about 150 interviews in the backlog. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I was very lucky there. I had content I could put up. So mm -hmm. when I send you this, it'll be unlisted on YouTube, but you're allowed to post it on your social media. Okay. okay. Yep. So that, that way you don't have to wait <laughs> for me to... <laughs> <laughs> because uh you know it's a waiting list for you and but i want you to be to put it up and so your friends and family can see it so okay great yeah absolutely well god bless you we're right. talking to samantha larkins flower city butcher and we're going to see a lot more of her in the future uh fantastic uh thank you anthony camano for recommending this uh lovely talent to us and uh and uh, have fun with Scotty McCoy when you go on his show. All right, I will. Thank you so much. Absolutely. God bless you. Take care. All right, you too. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.